Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian. Today I'm taking a look at a really cool pre-World War II Italian uh, close support grenade launcher. Uh, this is kind of the 1920s Italian version of the current US M203 underbarrel grenade launcher, or really any underbarrel grenade launcher. What the Italians did is in 1928 they wanted to have some close assault grenade launching capability embedded in infantry platoons. And they wanted something that was readily available at hand, that didn't require setting up a device and, and laying down a base plate and legs and, and that sort of thing. They wanted something that could be used very quickly and flexibly on the move. And so what they did was they took the 9128 Carcano uh, TS, Truppo Speciale, rifle, and they mounted a grenade launcher to the side of it. Now they did this in a, a pretty creative, kind of clever way that hasn't really been duplicated by anyone else, in that what they mounted to the side is actually pretty much a second rifle receiver and chamber with a grenade cup attached to it and space for a bolt. Now they didn't give it a second bolt. What you do to use this grenade launcher is load a cartridge into its chamber and then you pull the bolt out of the rifle portion of the gun and you insert it into the grenade launcher portion of the gun. The trigger on the rifle has a mechanical connection to the grenade launcher as well. So every time you pull the trigger, you're actually dropping the sear on both receivers. Uh, so you only need one bolt. This saves a little bit of weight uh, and it prevents you from accidentally having grenades chambered or grenade launching rounds chambered when you don't need them. Sort of thing. It, it's a creative and interesting solution to this particular problem. Now the sights are modified to include both a rifle sight and also uh, basically duplicate what you might consider a volley sight, uh, but set for grenades. So instead of being very long range, this is a very short range sight for a very low velocity projectile, like a grenade. And uh, the idea was to have actually quite a lot of these in service. The, the original issue plan was five per platoon. So that's a substantial portion of the guys running around with grenade launchers. Now the, the sights on these launchers go from 100 out to 200 meters. The maximum range you could get with one of these grenades was about 320 meters. Um, without using the sights you'd have to hold the rifle at like a 25 or 30 degree angle to get that maximum range. And the grenade itself, my understanding is this was kind of intentional. The grenade itself is pretty wimpy. Um, it's a 38 and a half millimeter tube and approximately a 38 millimeter grenade. Um, it's a spigot type grenade. So I'll show you the internals or how this grenade launcher works in a minute. But the grenade design itself was almost a mixture between fragmentation and flashbang. Apparently, um, they, they kind of min deliberately minimized the amount of fragmentation, or, or at least the fragmentation range, so that these could safely be used in very close quarters without endangering the shooter. The idea was you could use these for uh, flash and disorientation immediately before you assaulted an enemy position. And that was the intent. So an interesting tactical idea. Clearly it didn't work out as well as they had hoped because these were introduced in 1928 and they were declared obsolete and taken out of service in 1934, or at least declared obsolete and they started taking them out of service. Uh, some of these have been recovered from the Russian front uh, where they would, were clearly used in World War II, but they were not considered frontline equipment. Uh, these were taken out of service because the grenades were just uh, ultimately turned out to be too small and too ineffective. This system was replaced by a larger caliber, uh, the Model 35 Brixia, what was called an assault mortar, which is basically a light mortar. So something that wasn't quite as flexible or as quick to put into service, but had a much more effective um, explosive cartridge or explosive projectile. There aren't very many of these at all in the United States. Uh, best number I've been able to find is that 14 or 15 of them were imported uh, back in 1959 or 1960. Um, they're all 1929 and 1930 dated guns. Now what you can find more easily are guns that were in this configuration and that were then taken out of service by the Italians. Because when they demilitarized these or, or decommissioned them, they took off the grenade launchers, but then they reused the rifles and the stocks. 
Uh, and in fact, in many cases, they actually built them into some of the first production of 7.35 millimeter um, TS Model 38 rifles. So you will find those, and the way you can distinguish them is that where this grenade launcher was, th these are connected to the barrel, not just to the stock, but there's a big cutout in the stock to allow the, the connection there. And when they took these off, they would fill that in with a, a block of replacement wood, and that's kind of distinctive and obvious when you see them. And you can actually find, more commonly, these rifles having been rebuilt into standard TS carbines. So that's, that's a cool, you know, these guns are like five, six thousand dollar pieces, and there aren't very many of them, but it's a, a cool sort of uh, related, interesting gun to have one of the ones that was rebuilt as a regular carbine. So. All right, why don't we take a closer look at the mortar itself and the sights and the trigger mechanism and get an idea exactly how that worked. All right, as you can see, the grenade launcher is mounted right here on the side of the rifle, parallel to the rifle barrel. Now, let's look at a couple things. Let's start with the rear sight. So on the top of the rear sight, we have all of our standard markings, and this works just like a standard Carcano sight. You push in this button, and then you can adjust the sight up to whatever range. The battle sight on the Carcano is actually used with this uh, wing completely folded forward, and then this is your short range battle sight. Now, for use with the grenade launching, they added this second notch out on the side. And that notch has its own three uh, range markings. We've got 100, this middle one is 150, this last one is 200 meters. So that's our 150 meter range, and literally straight up, as tall as they can get this rear sight, is the 200 meter uh, marking. Now, you use that offset to the side rear notch in conjunction with this post as a front sight. So like I mentioned, this is conceptually very similar to uh, volley sights that were found on a lot of World War I and pre-World War I era rifles. And the idea is simply that by moving the front sight low in the stock and moving the rear sight up high, you're getting a lot more angle of elevation on the rifle, which is what you need when you're throwing a big heavy grenade slowly out, trying to get it out to 200 meters. Now the firing mechanism on the Carcano is pretty simple, as with many bolt-action rifles of this period. When you pull the trigger, it drops this sear down, which releases a striker in the bolt and fires the rifle. So we have a mechanical linkage in the stock that goes to right here, and when I pull the trigger back, this linkage is pulled back, and a series of levers drops that sear. At the same time, so let's take this one out. At the same time, I'm also dropping this sear in the rifle. So that's one reason you don't necessarily want to have two bolts in this thing, aside from weight, is that the trigger pulls both of them simultaneously. All right, now here's where this gets a little bit uh, unnerving, perhaps is the best term. One of the really cool uh, elements to this uh, Trombocini uh, grenade launching system is that it did not require the use of special ammunition. Most of the time a grenade launcher like this uses a, a blank crimped cartridge with no projectile. What the Italians did instead was decide that that was really a substantial logistical issue because, you know what, if you're supposed to have a blank and you need to fire a grenade, you just, you never actually have the blank cartridge when you need it. Um, so what they did was design the system to use standard ball ammunition. The way that works, there's a spigot inside here, and it's got four vent holes in it that, that direct the gas from the cartridge out around the spigot and up, where they will then throw the grenade out the end of the tube. This spigot is just sized right so that when you stick a ball cartridge in here, the tip of the bullet is being held by a little retaining cup. So the bullet literally has no place to go forward. When you pull the trigger, because the bullet can't move, the neck of the case expands open and the gas vents out around the bullet. Because the bullet doesn't have any time to accelerate, you don't have to worry about the impact of the bullet right in here. And so instead, the, the case basically ruptures at the front, the gas vents out, and that's what propels the grenade. 
So after you fire, you then open the bolt up, eject the empty cartridge case, and the, captive, the bullet, the captured bullet, simply falls out the back of the launcher. Um, the manual does talk about the procedure for what if the bullet gets stuck. In that case, the front of this spigot rod is actually threaded on, and the tool kit for this rifle came with a, a wrench that you could reach down in the muzzle of the grenade launcher, unthread this plug, and remove the, the stuck bullet with a cleaning rod. Now, not something that you want to have to do all the time, but it sounds like it wasn't something that happened all that often, just an occasional issue. So really, this is a clever system. You, you standard ammo, you don't have to try and dig up weird specialty cartridges. You don't accidentally fire uh, your blank cartridge in your rifle. You don't accidentally fire a live round in a blank only type of grenade launcher, which is a really bad mistake to make. Um, it's a good, clever system. Uh, unfortunately, they tied it to a grenade launcher or a grenade projectile that just wasn't combat effective. All right, so here's as best a view as I can get you down into the grenade cup launcher. So you can see the, the square ended stalk there is what the grenade actually sat on. And then there's a larger plug below it. That larger plug is to have, uh, basically covers the contour of a 6.5 Carcano chamber and catches the bullet. Uh, now that square end is, it is square so that you can fit a wrench on it and unscrew it, like I said in the case of a stuck projectile. Other than that, that's really all you've got going on in here. We can't see the gas vent holes down in the bottom um, simply because of this angle into the thing. So that's what you've got for the launcher itself. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, the firing mechanism on these really is kind of a sphincter clenching thing, I presume, until you're actually used to doing it. The idea of having an explosive grenade right here and stuffing a live round right in behind it is not confidence inspiring. Uh, I found a number of references to people who have these who've toyed with them, and uh, I think most of the guys who actually shoot these just use blanks because they're it's just a little too unnerving to stuff a live round in right behind even a dummy grenade. So, at any rate, a very cool rifle to take a look at because very few of these exist. Uh, you know, they didn't even really, some of them made it into World War II, but they, they weren't frontline equipment by that point. They were in the process of all being decommissioned. So, pretty cool. If you enjoy this sort of content, please consider stopping by patreon.com. Check out my support page. Uh, Donation of just a buck a month really can go a long way to help me continue to travel and find cool early assault mortars like this and uh, bring them to you guys. Thanks for watching.